What's the link between a firework and a modern car? This firework will go off with a bang when the blue touch paper is lit, and the airbag in a car also goes off with a bang. Both happen for the same reason, pyrotechnics, or in other words, both contain an explosive device. Range Rover and Discovery vehicles now have airbags. It's called a Supplementary Restraint System, or SRS for short. Before restraint systems were fitted, occupants could be thrown around inside a car, just like you see these dummies. And this vehicle on the test rig is doing 30 miles an hour when it hits the block. The majority of accidents occur at slower impact speeds, but you can see what could happen. So the wearing of seatbelts was made compulsory, and it had a dramatic effect on the number of deaths and serious injuries as a result of road accidents. But more was needed to protect the occupants and hence the introduction of airbags. This has brought its own set of problems in service. Because of their explosive potential, we tend to be a bit nervous about handling them. So in this program, we're going to uncover some of the mystique which surrounds SRS systems by telling you how they work and the do's and don'ts in service. So you'll know how to handle them with confidence and safety. But before we get into details, let's first dispel some misconceptions. The airbag will only deploy in a major accident. The system is so designed that it's activated only if the severity of impact is such that the driver's head might hit the steering wheel, or the fascia in the case of a passenger, even when seat belts are warm. The system is also designed so that airbags will only deploy in a frontal collision, or at most within about 30 degrees of a head-on. They won't in a side or rear impact or a rollover. nor will they deploy under rough driving conditions. We put all our vehicles through an extremely arduous testing program to make sure they don't. Airbags do not replace seat belts. A seat belt is still the primary means of restraint and the airbag is secondary. It's interesting that the airbag is actually traveling at about 200 miles an hour while it's deploying. So obviously it's important that the occupant doesn't meet it while being impelled forward during that time. The seat belt stops that happening, and of course, it also gives protection against rollover and side or rear impacts. Another popular misconception is that the airbag is a rather nice soft pillow to fall into. It isn't. All accidents involving the deployment of airbags will be violent, so it has to be tough enough to provide protection against the G-forces imposed on your head. But in fact, a controlled amount of cushioning is provided because the airbag will start to deflate when your head hits it. The timing of the restraint system is critical to reduce injury to a minimum. 
The occupant is thrown forward on impact and the torso is then stopped from excessive movement by the seat belt, but the head will continue to move forward. In the meantime, the airbag has been deploying and becomes fully deployed just in time to cushion the head and prevent it from hitting the steering wheel. Although our airbag systems have changed in detail, particularly to do with crash sensing, they all work on a similar principle. About 15 milliseconds after impact, that's 15 thousandths of a second, the severe deceleration of the car triggers deployment of the airbag. Within 5 milliseconds, the airbag is unfolding, and 45 to 50 milliseconds after impact, it's fully inflated. By approximately 120 milliseconds, that's about half the time it takes to blink an eye, the occupant will have moved back in the seat, the airbag will have deflated, and visibility is restored. So, how does it all happen? The driver's airbag is mounted in the steering wheel, and if a front seat passenger's airbag is fitted, it's here, in the fascia. If the system is deployed, the padding tears open along special brake lines to allow the airbags to open. On current Range Rovers and Discoveries, the major components to operate the system, that is the deceleration sensors and the electronics, are located in the Diagnostic and Control Unit, or DCU, like this one, mounted between the front seats. It's called a single point sense system. The DCU provides the electrical impulse to deploy the airbag. There are two release sensors, a crash sensor and a safing sensor. These register the severity of the impact and both sensors have to be activated to cause deployment. On our latest vehicles, the crash sensor is an electronic device which generates a signal related to vehicle deceleration. The DCU monitors this crash signal and uses it to decide if the deceleration is severe enough to warrant airbag deployment. The safing sensor is wired in series to the crash sensor. It's an electromechanical device. Under heavy deceleration, a metal weight, normally held back by a spring, is thrown forward and completes an electrical contact. This safing sensor ensures that a spurious electrical signal from the crash sensor doesn't cause airbag deployment. So the inbuilt safety factor is that both sensors have to close before the airbags are actioned. Current Range Rover vehicles for North America have a distributed system. Its most obvious difference from the single point sense system is that two crash sensors are fitted and they are located on either side near the front of the vehicle. A roller inside the sensor has a flexible spring steel band wrapped around it and holding it against a stop. In a sudden deceleration, the roller tries to overcome the resistance of the spring steel strip and in a severe impact, the roller will move far enough to complete an electrical circuit. The safing sensor is in the DCU and works in a similar way to the single point sense system. In both types, the DCU is powered from the car's electrical system. But a point which must be mentioned here is that deployment is not fired from the battery itself, but is actually from a charge stored in a capacitor in the DCU. This is done to make sure that if the battery disconnects on impact, the airbag can still be fired. This is the gas generator. It comprises an ignition device in the small central chamber surrounded by a supplementary charge and by fuel tablets in the larger outer chamber. Inflation happens in two stages. The electrical impulse from the DCU capacitor causes the ignition device to ignite the supplementary charge. This in turn ignites the main charge of fuel tablets which generate the gas to inflate the airbag. Of course, in practice, all that happens pretty much instantaneously, and you'll have noticed that immediately after deployment, the airbag deflates. One other component to mention is this SRS warning light. It illuminates for about five seconds when the ignition is switched on, and during that time, a testing cycle of the complete airbag system is made by the DCU. If it then goes out, all is well. If it doesn't come on, or if it doesn't go out, there's a fault in the system which you will be able to diagnose using test book. Of course, the DCU continues to monitor the SRS system while the ignition is on. So if the light comes on during driving, it means that a fault has occurred. And it's worth bearing in mind 
that while the light is on, the system is dysfunctional. That's how the airbag system works. So now let's look at the all-important safety precautions you must take when you work on the system. Airbags are designed not to deploy inadvertently, but precautions should always be followed to reduce risk to a minimum. Most of the rules are common sense, but bear in mind that because the equipment is pyrotechnic, it is legally covered by the Explosives Act, which includes things like handling and storage. Before working on the system, switch off, remove the key and disconnect both battery leads. Then wait for 10 minutes. This is to ensure that the capacitor is fully discharged. And if you are removing or fitting an airbag, it makes sense not to work directly in front of it. Keep to one side. Before you reconnect the battery, ensure all mechanical fixings of the airbag system are correctly torqued. And it's good practice to make sure no one is inside the car. Here are some things you shouldn't do. The airbag and the DCU are shock sensitive, so they must be handled with care. Don't drop them. If you suspect that a DCU has been dropped, don't fit it, because the sensor components may have been damaged. Don't carry an airbag by its cable, and always carry it with the cover uppermost. If you're transporting it somewhere, don't put it on the seat beside you. Put it carefully in the boot, cover upwards. When you test the system, never, never prod around indiscriminately with voltmeter probes. You might just make contact with the wrong thing and short circuit the system. Always use the correct test book procedure. Never try to open an airbag. It contains sodium azide, which is poisonous. It's also very flammable, and any contact with water, acid or heavy metals may produce harmful substances, so always keep it dry. Special bolts are used to secure the airbag in position. Never use any other type of bolt. If you ever have to dispose of an airbag, it must never be thrown away undeployed, if, for instance, a vehicle is being dismantled or scrapped. We'll look at how you should deploy it in a minute. Incidentally, the recommended service life for an airbag is 10 years, after which it should be renewed. Because airbags are classed as explosives, they must be stored in an approved secure steel cabinet, even overnight. Make sure they're stored with the cover upwards, and never put anything on top of them. Don't store them near sources of heat or near electrical equipment. These safety rules are most important for your peace of mind, so let's quickly run through them again. Store and carry an airbag with a cover uppermost. Don't let water get on it. Don't put it on the seat beside you if you have to transport it somewhere. Don't drop it or the DCU if it's a separate item. If you do, you must not fit it. If you have to remove an airbag, first disconnect both battery leads and wait 10 minutes for the capacitor to discharge. And don't work directly in front of an airbag. Always follow the workshop manual instructions whenever you work on the system. Make sure you only use the specified bolts to secure the airbag and tighten all fixings to the correct torque. Don't test with a voltmeter, use test book. And if you have to dispose of an airbag, it must be deployed first. If you do have to dispose of an airbag, it's very important to do it right. Procedures vary from model to model, and you'll find specific instructions in the relevant workshop manual. But in general, you do it like this. First, you'll need the deployment tool SMD4082. Read the instruction supply with it very carefully. You'll also need protective goggles, earplugs, and gloves. The components get very hot during deployment. Before you use the deployment tool, follow the instructions to carry out a self-test on it. You can either deploy in situ or remotely, but remember, if you're deploying in situ, you connect the tool directly to the airbag wires, not to the control unit, so you can fire each airbag separately. And make sure the airbag is secure within its mounting, and that the mounting itself is also secure. If deploying it remotely, a special bracket is supplied with the deployment tool. Clamp the bracket in a vise and securely mount the airbag to it. In either case, connect the tool as instructed, making sure you don't lean over the airbag while you're connecting it. 
and check that everyone is at least 15 meters away, including yourself, before you press the buttons. Then leave it for half an hour to cool down. Once you've done all that, put the deployed unit into a plastic bag and seal it ready for disposal. If you're repairing a damaged vehicle in which the airbag has been deployed, there are a number of components which must be renewed. As well as the airbag itself, the control unit must also be changed and sometimes the wiring harness and other components. The relevant workshop manual will give you specific details of this. One final thought before we finish. As we said earlier, airbags can be dangerous if they are handled incorrectly. This airbag is being deployed face up, and this one face down. You wouldn't want to be standing in the way of that, would you? For safety's sake, remember the rules we've shown you when you handle any pyrotechnic equipment. That completes this program on supplementary restraint systems, and we hope it's answered your questions and showed you the rights and wrongs when working with pyrotechnic components. Remember, the actual equipment fitted does vary from model to model, so don't forget to refer to the relevant workshop manual. And if you are in any doubt at all, always ask for advice.